2 Kings 16. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jothan, king of Judah, south, began to reign. Now we're looking at Judah, Ahaz. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign. And he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, the capital, and did not. This is one of those things in Judah. Because some kings did right in Judah, and some kings did not do right in Judah. Here's one of the ones that did do right. That was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel who did wrong. Yea, yea, has God said, and made his son to pass through the fire. Let's look at Deuteronomy 18.10. Now, pretty much God stayed in the south. When they went north, they went everywhere against God. The temple is in Jerusalem. The law is in Jerusalem. It's supposed to be throughout all Israel. But Israel north didn't keep it. Judah kept it sometimes. So when we look at Deuteronomy 18, verse 10, there shall not be found among you anyone, we're looking at a king now, Ahaz, that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. And what this is, this is Molech. And this would be, I think in the Valley of Hinnom, I'm not sure about that, but this would be a big cast iron, iron idol statue, which is against God. Exodus 20, throughout the whole Bible. And in this belly of this, of this image, there was fire. And it had mechanical arms. They would work with triggers and pulleys. Or how, I mean, listen, their, their advancement was probably more advancement than our advancement. Look at the, pil the pyramids and all that. But in cases where they'll take the baby, sometimes they'll legitimate the baby, especially religions that where the priests or the women of the thing would have intercourse with somebody else and become pregnant. And we sure can't keep that baby because we're supposed to be solemn and holy to God and chastity. And so we got to do something with that baby. Can't keep it. But what they would do is they take that baby, put it in the arms of this 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 image, this this beast. And this belly would be full of fire. And they'll start beating drums. And loud and loud and loud and loud, almost like what. You hear it come out of car stereos today in a nation that aborts babies. And the music gets louder and louder and it gets to the point where you would not hear the mechanicalness of those arms throwing those babies into that fire, sacrificing their babies and their children to this God. And this would be like Abraham and Isaac, the devil going up to God and saying, hey, listen, you see, you see what my people are doing? They're giving me their children. I bet you ain't got nobody like that, God. And we'll see that in a minute. So when we come back to 16, verse 3, he made his son to pass through the fire. That's the first time. I know Exodus 18, 10 is the, is the law. But this is the first time the Bible records this being done by anybody of the children of God, Israel or Judah. This is the first man to, to be recorded. To have taken his son and given it to Molech. And it's Judah. And it's Ahaz. Now, is this the first time ever? It says, Yea, made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen. It's not the ever first time. This was something that the heathen did. Now, what kind of other things would the heathen do? Oh, let's see. They go out in the woods to cut a tree, and they deck it with, with gold and silver, and they, and they fasten it with nails that it won't move. You, you've read Jeremiah 10, haven't you? Not be dismayed with uh, the, the, the heathen. You, you've read that. I hope. I hope your church hasn't passed over that passage, having the church in your altar. I wouldn't think anything like that. But this is something the heathen did. And this would probably be the call again, like I said, to Satan to God. Hey, I got them to sacrifice to my children. So all these Christians upset about abortion, though it's wrong. Nowhere we're told to go defend abortion. We're told to go eat all the world and preach the gospel. You want to talk about abortion, the baby's been born, and then they cast it into these fires. 
whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. So the nations that were doing this before Israel came in the land, God said all those sins that the nations were doing, the Canaanites, the Hivites, God says, listen, those sins you're doing, it's, it's reaching to a point when Israel came across that Jordan, your cup became filled and started running over. Now you're going to get kicked out of the land. America needs to learn 2 Kings 16, 3, because it's going to a point where the cup gets filled like Babylon's cup in Revelation. It's a major cup such as Germany. I will curse them that curse you. That when you overflow that cup as such as Sodom and Gomorrah, that God says that wickedness is crying out to me, you're out of here. You're out. Judah is going to get to that point. Israel is going to get there first. And God says, okay, Israel, you're out. God's long-suffering. Judah, did you see what I did to Israel? Yeah, we did, but we don't care. We're going to do sacrifice to the queen of heaven. We're still going to burn our little cakes. We're going to do our sacrifices. We haven't done it, and that's why she's mad at us. That's why we're in the condition we are, Jeremiah. But this has been going on. But this is the first recorded event by the Bible, by the Holy Spirit, as King Ahaz, taking the royal children, whom God has given to Israel, and sent right into the Moab. So it's not just he has done wrong. He's sacrificing his children. He sacrificed and burnt incense in high places like everybody else is doing and on the hills and under every green tree that's against god's design this is a tree hugger this is what this is what you would call in the, in the realms of oh i said it today um druids this is your yule log this is the same stuff that goes on at Christmas time. This is the same stuff that goes out throughout the year that they're worshiping forms of religion. And it's angering God. Then Risen, king of Syria. You think the Syrian problem today is... Israel's always had a problem with Syria. And... Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, excuse me. And Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, that's north, came up to Jerusalem to war. So here is Syria. Here is Israel north. They're coming to Jerusalem. They want to do battle. It's a partial civil war again with Syria helping Israel. And they besiege Ahaz. Why? Because look at all the sins he's doing. He has left the temple to go into a church of Satan, of religion, of green peas, of tree hugging, spotted owls, not overcome him. Now, at that time, risen king of Syria recovered Eleth to Syria, gained land back, and dragged the Jews. That's the first Jews in the Bible, right there, from Eleth. So the first mention of Jews, they're being taken away captive. They're being driven out. The first time Jew shows up in the Bible, it's not a good condemnation. Let me look up here, right here, I got this. The first time Jew shows up is Esther 2.5. And a certain Jew named Mordecai. So one, the first Jew is Mordecai. Jews, Elah, being scattered away out. And the Syrians came to Elah, where the Jews were, and dwelt there unto this day. So the Jews lost this land. The Syrians said to him, this land is my land. This ain't your land. Move on out. Now, I'm not saying that to be, I'm just saying that that's what happened. So Ahaz, south, Judah, sent messengers to Tiglath Pizer, Pizer, king of Assyria. All right, so now we got Syria, we got Assyria, saying, I am thy servant. This is God's enemy, Assyria. The Assyrian is a type of Antichrist in the Bible. And he says, I'm not going to rely on God. 
I'm going to rely on the Assyrian horses, the Assyrian chariots, the Assyrian, not Syria, excuse me, Assyrian horses, Assyrian chariots, Assyrian armies. Where is his God? Where is his God that he's been throwing his babies into? Where is his God he's been going up to the mountaintops? Where is his God he's been burning the incense? It's not working. And he sure can't turn to Jehovah because he's angry at Jehovah. So the next best place he's got to turn to, i got to turn to a man. That ain't going to help you. I am thy servant and thy son. Okay, so can you, why don't you throw him in the Syria? Why don't you throw him in the fire? That's what he did to his sons. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which raise up against it. I need help. I can't turn to God, and my gods ain't working. How's that? How's that? And Ahaz took the silver and gold and the... Yeah, that was found in the house of the Lord. So he doesn't have any worship of God. He's turned to God, but when he needs help, he turns to the temple and strikes off the gold and silver of the temple to pay for a man to help him. And there are people who, I, I had this one, when, when I tried to start a church, I would get phone calls from people, my water bill is done, my electric bill is done, I need food, I need groceries. Yeah, so do I. Well, you're supposed to help me. Are you in church? No. Are you saved? I don't know what you mean. And in time of trouble, people do not worship God. Nobody who wants to have anything to do with God. Oh, here comes God now. God, help me. Open up your big pocketbook. And that's scripture because Jesus said, bring your purse. They found the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. Okay, so he did take up his own money. You ever wonder how much more, how much money, when you put it in the balance, was it more of the God's money, or was it more of the King's house money? I would think it was more. The, I would think, to the man of idea of great human is, I would think more came of God's house than his house. But I can be wrong. And sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. It's a bribery. Hell, he's hiring missionary uh, mercenaries. The king of Syria hearkened unto him, money talks. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, and carried the people of it captive to Kerr, and slew reason. Let me get him out of the way. That's the king of Assyria. So, all right, you paid off Assyria. Assyria says, okay, thank you for the money, I'll help you out. But what if somebody ever came up to Assyria and said, listen, I'll give you more money if you can rip out Judah? Wouldn't you think that man goes to the highest bidder? You could buy somebody? I wouldn't trust anybody like that would be bought for money. Why not just rely on God? And King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Teg Tegelith Pizer, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was in Damascus. Now, Paul was going to Damascus to get more Christians dead. Locked up, handcuffed. And King Ahaz sent to Uriah, 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 the priest. Uh, here's a priest. The fashion of the altar and the pattern of it, according to all the workmanship thereof. Uriah, yeah, I want you to go on your way to Damascus. There's a great altar over there. I want you to get all the blueprints for it. I want you to get a picture of it. I want you to get brochures of it. Hey, why don't you buy some bumper stickers in a, in a gift shop over there? Why don't you get some t-shirts? We visited this altar. Get a hat. Get some poster for the kids that I didn't burn. Right? Don't you go to Washington, D.C. and you take a picture of the big buildings and the big Abraham Lincoln, talk to Abraham Lincoln, and don't you get to go to the gift shop and get the t-shirts, the hats, the bumper stickers, and the books, and the photographs, and the postcards, and yeah, I mean, nothing new under the sun. Uriah the priest built an altar. 
Now, it doesn't say this guy is a priest of God or a priest of Ahaz. But we're going to see him in the temple in a moment. He rises a priest, built an altar. According to all that King Ahaz has sent to Damascus, so Uriah the priest made it against King Ahaz, came to Damascus. So here is this God altar, not capital G-O-D, small G-O-D altar in Damascus in Assyria. Ahaz, who is not worshiping God, says, make me that altar. A priest comes along, gets the pattern, and he makes this altar. That's not a Jehovah. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar. So the king comes back to Jerusalem. While he's in Damascus, Uriah, Uriah has gone up, taken the photograph, taken the, the measurements. He's already come back to Jerusalem and has built this altar. Then Ahaz comes. And the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. The offering is supposed to be of the priest, not the king. Uzziah tried to incense off, and he ended up with leprosy. And he burnt his burnt offerings and his meat offerings and poured his drink offerings and sprinkled the blood of the peace offering upon the altar. It's supposed to be the brazen altar of God and not by the king. So now we have another religion in Judah. We have another altar. We have another sacrifice. By a man that's already got Molech as his god. He's going out to the green trees and worshiping other gods. And it probably would be when he's going up on these high hills or mountains, they're worshiping the host of heaven, the stars. Got to check my astronomical record and see what, you know, my horoscope says for today. Kind of thing. What are in the stars? And he brought also the brazen altar. Now, this is God's altar. This is the one with, made by uh, uh, Moses, Solomon set up, which was before the Lord, Jehovah. Before the Lord, you got the brazen altar, you got the laver, you got the tabernacle, you got the holy place, and you got the most holy place, and in front of that most holy place is that brazen altar, the laver. And you got the bread, you have the candlestick, the incense altar, the mercy seat. We're in the tabernacle. I mean, we're in the temple now of Solomon. That brazen altar is out in the courtyard. It's not in the building. From the forefront of the house, which is right in front. Everybody that came to the temple, came to the courtyard, the first thing they would see would be, there's that brazen altar. That's where the animals, that's where you would tie the animals. That's where you, the animals would be sacrificed. That's where the blood would be poured out. It's not being done like that now with King Ahab. King Ahaz has his own altar. From between the altar and the house of the Lord would be the laver. And put it on the north side of the altar. So this altar is not God's altar. It's a Damascus altar. has been put into the courtyard north of God's altar. There are now two altars in the courtyard in front of the temple. That is not to be so. And churches today have two altars. They have one that is of God, and they have one that is made by man. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on, hold, let me get this right. The altar of the church used to be an altar. We got a prayer over altar. The altar is open for prayer. Today it's called a stage. So you got an altar in the stage. Let's take off the pulpit, let's take off all the things dedicated to God, so we can have our performance. We will do our, our our skit on the stage after church. Our music group will perform. Am I right or am I wrong? And King Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, Uriah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar, that's his altar. Look what he's just done. He has lowered God's altar to say, mine is the great altar. God is the great God of all gods. Not his altar. Burn the morning burnt offering and the evening meat offering. That was supposed to be on the brazen altar. 
not his altar. And the king's burnt sacrifice and his meat offerings with the burnt offerings of all the people of the land, Jews, Israel, strangers, their burnt offerings, their drinkings, and drink, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offerings and all the blood of the sacrifice and the brazen altar, God's, shall be for me to inquire by. I am going to use God's altar instead of the burnt sacrifice and the blood. I am going to use God's altar as open up newspaper and see what my daily horoscope is. The Urim and Thurim is no more working of the high priest. I'm going to put some tea leaves or whatever on the brazen altar of God, and I'm going to read the tea leaves and see what kind of thing I can get for my daily thing. I'm going to, I'm going to get the lucky numbers off God's brazen altar. But everything for a sacrifice to the gods, you do on my great altar. You set God's, throne, God's altar off to the side. What, now, that brazen altar, that picture is hell. God says that fire is to be eternally burning on that altar. So if you got another altar that's, that is burning and there's a fire to do the sacrifice, what would that be of man's altar? I got the perfect name for you. Purgatory. There is no purgatory in the Bible. It's a secondary fire that men control. And if you were to bring your burnt offerings, your candles, and pay the priest, we will pray for your souls of your loved ones that are in purgatory. We'll pray for them out. Well, what about God's hell? There is no God's hell. There's no hell. All is well, there's no hell. There's enough prayers, there's enough candles, and whatever you need to do and sell magazines or, or get many wives you want to, we'll get you out of God's hell, you know, into our hell, which is just temper. That's the teaching. I would assume that God's altar has gone out. They're not using it for sacrifices. Sitting cold. Shall be for me to inquire about it. It's not the use of the altar. Thus did Uriah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. What about what God commanded? Shut God off, turn God off, put God out. We don't want him. Now watch up. King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases. This would be the brazen labor. And removed the labor from off them. And took down the sea from off the brazen uh, oxen. First Kings 725. This guy is destroying what Solomon did. First Kings 7. Let's see what, let's see what, I was going to say Adam. First Kings 7, 25. And we'll start in verse 23. Now, this is Solomon building the laver for the temple, where the priests were to wash, where the Bible says, by the washing of the word. He made a molten sea. There it is. We've mentioned the sea. Ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was round all about, circular. And the height was five cubits, and a line of 30 cubits to compass around it. That's the circumference, the circle. And under the brim of it, round about, there were knobs compassing. That's the first time that word shows up. Ten in cubit, compassing the sea round about, and the knobs were cast in two rows when it was cast. Now here we go. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking to the north, three looking to the west, three looking to the south, and three looking towards the east. Well, when those oxen looked to the north now, guess what they saw? The ones looking to the north, they saw that great altar. And they would probably shake their heads. And the sea was set upon them, and their hinder parts were inward. So there it is. And it was a hand breadth thick, and the, and, the brim was, uh, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies, first time that word shows up, it contained, that's the first time that word shows up, 2,000 bath. That's the first time that word shows up. He made 10 bases, first time that word shows up, of brass. Four in cubic was the length, one base, 
and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height thereof. The work of the bases were on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between his ledges. And on the borders were ledges were lion, oxen, and cherubim. Upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. Okay, so here's the labor, here's the oxen, here's the bases. Now back to over to 2 Kings, verse 17. 1617. King A has cut off the borders of the bases. We just finished with that. There were lions and cherubims and oxen. And removed the labor from all them and took down the sea. We just read about that. From the brazen oxen. Remember, three this side, three that side, three that side. That were under it and put it upon a pavement of stone. So he just put some rocks there. All right, that's what he put it on. No more oxen, no more base. It's just sitting on a pile of rocks. And a covered, a covering, a shield for the Sabbath that they might build the house, build, excuse me, built in the house. And the king's entry, that's the first time that word showed up, without. So he's redesigned the whole temple. He's destroying things that Solomon has done. He's adding things that weren't there with Solomon. He's made a, his own little hideaway in the temple for him own self. And he can go sit there in his patio or whatever he has there on the Sabbath day and admire what he has done. Turn he from the house of the Lord from the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, in hell today, and buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. So, here's a king of Judah who did horrible, absolutely horrible, and God loves it. Long-suffering. The wages of sin. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Satan.